welcome to Friendship Mission Church, the church for the homeless and the poor, founder and pastor Vince Rosado. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. I'm a licensed minister by my bishop, Jimmy A. Ellis III, out of Victory Christian Center of Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tonight's sermon is going to be on friendship. We're called Friendship Mission Church, and God talks a lot about real friendship in the Word of God. So get your papers, your pad, and your Bible, and get ready for a mighty word from God dealing with friendship, because we know the word friendship is the word phileo, meaning friendship love. So it's time to get rid of some friends, and it's time to gain real friends. So as I always say, there you go, right there. Mm -hmm. God bless you. I get to the book of John. Let's just go to the book of John. Let's just go to the book of John. Let's go to the book of John. We're going to open it up with scripture before I tell you what my subject matter is. Please take the baby out of the corner if necessary. All right. So let's go to John chapter 15 before we uh, get prayed. John 15. John 15. If you with me, say amen. Amen. Right. Starting at verse 13. Ready? Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord do. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me. But I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Amen. These things I command you that you love one another. But Jesus said here, I called you friends. Amen. My sermon tonight is true friendship. How many of y'all got real friends? Amen. I mean, I can count on one hand how many real friends I have. Okay, let's see what God says about his word. God talks a lot about friendship in the Bible. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for this word that you may come forth. I thank you that we're going to go into a new year and a new season. Some people, it's time for them to get rid of friends. Cast out old friends and bring in new friends that will help lift them up, carry them forth, and let them see that you are willing to love them, care for them. But the Greek word for friend is phileo, and you're ready to phileo. So, Father, we just ask you that we walk in the word of your word this evening, that brothers and sisters may be established, filled, and guided in your word. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Let the house say amen. 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 All right, we're going to be talking about true friendship this evening. And as I said, the word friendship in the Greek means this, phileo. It's the Greek word for friendship love. But another word for friendship that God uses is when he says, you're my friend, he's calling you his companion. Ain't that wonderful that God says, you're my companion when you come unto me? That's an awesome thing. We're going to see that in the word too. Let's go to um, James chapter 2. James 2. I'm excited about this tonight because I, as I was studying this, it made me see what God really expects us to choose our friendships wisely. Amen. Because you know? some of us are connected to the wrong type of friendship. Amen. And the way that we understood a friend, we ain't supposed to rap, we ain't supposed to snitch, we ain't supposed to. God ain't said none of that stuff. You know, we equate the wrong friendship. So hopefully after this evening, you will make up your mind to choose some good friendships. Amen? So let's go to James chapter 2. And look at verse 23. And it says, And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed, or calculated, unto him for righteousness. And he was called the what? The friend of God. Amen. Wouldn't you like to have your name connected to being the friend of God? Amen. 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 But let's look at something else, too. Stay in James, go to chapter 4, and look at verse 4. You adulterers and adulteresses, Know ye not that the friendship or companion of the world, who knows what the world is, where we're in right now, it's the world, it's the devil. Amen. 
Uh, friendship of the world is enmity with God. What does enmity mean? Hatred. And it also means the opposite of the agape love of God. The love of God is agape love. It means unconditional. So if you're more friends with the world than with God, there's hatred in the eyes. Amen? For what? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is what? An enemy of God. Now, I brought that out to, to ask you this question. Why friendship is so important and the right friendships can be the cure for pride? The right friendship can be the cure for pride. Amen? And if you're connected to the right people, it'll cure your pride. Amen? Go to Ecclesiastes. I'm telling you, underline these verses, what this, what we can read into right now, God bless you with revelation of knowledge when this took me out. Man. God sees brotherhood and friendship so important. So important. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. And we just getting started, man. I got so much info. I don't want to speed past it. Amen? So, we know friendship is important and it's also the cure for pride. So let's look at what God says. Starting at verse 1 in chapter 4, Ecclesiastes. So I returned and considered all the uh, oppressions that are done under the sun. He said, I'm looking at everything that's done under the sun, amen? And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed, and they had no comfort. And on the side of their oppressors, there was power. I mean, you got people who oppress you with power. I say what they are, the spirit store, the weed dealer, the cocaine dealer. Why do they have so much power? They got something you want to oppress you. Amen. That one just came on me. I didn't have it, but I was reading But anyway, and on the side of their oppressors, there was power, but they had no comfort. Wherefore, I praise the dead, which are already dead. Look at that. He's so oppressed. He's saying the dead are better than me. Amen. I praise the dead that are already dead more than the living, which are yet alive. Yet, better is he than both dead which has not yet been, who has not seen the evil work that is done under the sun. Again, I consider all the travail and every right work, that for this a man is envy of his neighbor. This is also vanity and vexation of the spirit. Vanity is pride and vexation is irritation. It irritates you. Amen, it should be. Verse five, the fool folded his hands together and eat of his own flesh. Better is a handful with quietness than both the hands full with travail and vexation of the spirit. Then I returned and I saw vanity under the sun. Verse 8. There is one alone and there is not a second. Yes. He has neither child nor brother. Yet is there no end of his labor. Underline that word labor. It stands for work. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither said he, for whom do I labor and bereave my soul of good? This is also vanity. Yes, it is a sore travail. Ooh, this is one of the good scriptures. Verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Verse 10. For if they fall, pay attention to this. If they fall, the one will what? Lift up his fellow. But woe or judgment to him that is alone when he falls. Man, I heard the quietness come in this one. How many of you been alone when you fell? Amen. 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 <laughs> come on. Amen. But woe unto him that is alone when he falls. For he has not another to help him up. Verse 11. And again, if two lie together, then they have heat. Oh, uh, y'all been out in the cold? I guess. I don't know how cold to get down there. I know I've been out in the cold up north. Then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Mm -hmm. Better is a poor and a wise child than an old and foolish king who will not no more be admonished or be warned. Well, what am I talking about? If you want to write this down in those scriptures, God is showing you that when you got a real friend, you, that person is working with you. When you got a real friend, that person is walking with you. Through all your situations, good, bad, and different. When you got a real friend, that person provides warmth to your spirit and to your soul. Amen. And when you got a real friend, he'll go to war with you. 
Amen. He looked forward. Amen. Amen. Back to back. Now you should be in the game too, saying back to back. I mean, we come. Amen. <laughs> now y'all shoot. Now we get into the But anyway, let's go up to verse 8, and you will see work in there. Look at verse 8. Remember I said other words of the word of labor? There is one alone, and there is not a second. Yet he that has neither child nor brother, yet is there no end of his work. But if you got somebody working with you, work becomes easy. Doesn't it? Go down to verse 9 and 10. Verse 9 and 10 said, better. Two are better than one. Why? Because two of y'all walking together is better than one. You know why? Because that person walking with you helps you see the things that you're doing wrong. And then you can receive it as good criticism, not major criticism, or beating you down. Because your friend is going to tell you things that will help you get up. Tell it. No matter how truthfully hurtful it may be, Amen. you know that person loves you, or they wouldn't say nothing. Amen. 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 Now look at verse 11. It says, and again, if two lie together, they have heat. How many of you to lay down on the ground? I heard that a few brothers sleep out there in the woods. Yeah. I know they get rainy and cold. What do they got to fold on to? Nothing. They got a little cool, little blanket, and that ain't helping. But when we come in here, y'all lay these mats on the floor. And y'all be like, I don't want to lay this to that dude. But that dude is providing you heat warm. Did you think about that? When you look to that brother on your left or right, I don't care if you're on the floor, guess what else you got? You ain't on a hard floor. You're in a warm building, and you next to someone in the same condition as you. And watch this. Here's the last one. Warfare. Ready to fight the same war you fight. Everybody in here is fighting the same war. What's the war you fight? Homelessness. Drug addiction. Alcoholism. Amen. 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 And don't be ashamed. I'm not saying that to shame you. Amen. Because it lets you know you're not alone. And if both of y'all come together, both of y'all can lift each other up. Amen. Instead of pointing. Amen. Lift each other up. Amen. 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 There are four levels of friendship. Ready? For those of you who are writing, write this down. There's surface, number one. There's structure, number two. There is secure or security. And there is a solid trust or have a solid relationship. Amen? Because when you have surface relationship, you're learning from one another. You know, I like being around older gentlemen. You know why? I don't care what their condition is. They got some wisdom. So, people, how many people you have looked at and said, they don't know what they're doing? Right? You know, that's why he don't know what he's doing. She don't know what she's doing. But you know what she's doing for you? Showing you what not to do. Amen. So they're both good for you. Amen. Even the one that's doing right is showing you what to do. So that person you always talk about don't know what they're doing, they're showing you what not to do. They're still teaching you something. They're teaching you what not to do. Amen. Amen. Then you have structure. That means you're spending time with that friend all the time. You can talk to that friend. You can be open about anything that's going on. You know, how many times y'all be talking to somebody, then a third person walking in, y'all shut down the whole conversation, especially like y'all talking about sports. <laughs> when talking about sports. Then you have security in that friendship. Why? Because now you done tested them. They done stood the test of time in your friendship. Now you know you can trust them with confident information. Amen? Because I ain't telling everybody everything. Now, I, mean, I have gotten to the place where I ain't ashamed of nothing I've ever done. You know, there ain't no way in the world you're going to shame me. You can't tell them on me. You know what I mean? I done already told on myself too many times when you're going to tell them on me. So, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> You know? Then you have a solid trust in your friendship. That means now it's proven transparent. Transparency. You know, you can be transparent. That person see you, they are so close to you, they can see that you have an issue. And you ain't even got to say nothing. You're trying to put on that face, but your friend is going to know something's wrong. Amen. 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 And they're going to pull you up on it. A real friend will. Amen. 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 Real friendships are a God connection and a soul connection. What do I mean by that? We're going to look at it in Scripture. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 18. Now, the Scripture I'm going to look at, there have been some churches, and again, I told y'all before, I have nothing against homosexuals. I have nothing against anyone. I will tell you that is wrong, but I ain't sending you to hell over it because we all deserve hell, don't we? Amen. I don't agree with it. We'll never agree with it. But 
I ain't beating you down. But the verse we can make look at, there's a church out here now that put their church on homosexual marriages, lesbian marriages, based on this on this verse here that we're getting ready to talk about a little bit. But believe me, it's not based on that. First Samuel 18. I figured I had to inject that in there. Because there are some people who aren't even excusing the act of homosexuality based on this verse. Give me a break, okay? Give me a break. This verse we can really look at, it deals with real, true, man to man, or female to female friendship. That's why I said you ain't gonna have too many like this, amen? Look at verse one. 18.1, 1 Samuel 18.1, it says, And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Did that sound like a homosexual verse to you? Yep. It does? <laughs> That's because you don't understand the love of God. Jonathan was older than David. But Jonathan was also the son of King Saul. That means their friendship was so close, it was like loving a woman. <coughs> How many of you would like friendships like that? Actually, that's the way a marital friendship should be, in my point of view, between a husband and a wife. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Matter of fact, y'all say hello to my wife. your souls together. Now you see the term soul tie. That's where it comes from. And a lot of people do that in fornication, which is negative. That's why the enemy is allowed to come into your life at will when you're in fornication. Because you open the door for spiritual attack. And all he wants to do is zap your anointing and zap your spirit. Amen? Amen. So, them knitting their souls together is the perfect example of a real friend. Amen? Amen. So we saw that that was a what? A soul connection. Because I said real friendships have a soul connection. Who are you connected in their soul with? Amen. Then you have God connection. Go to Luke chapter 6. You know a real friend. I always knew when I hit one I can automatically tell who I'm going to be connected with. You know why? Because the first person I know I'm going to be connected with as a friend, we have a fight. We have some sort of disagreement. Then the moment we make up, I know that's my friend. You know? I don't avoid him. Every good friend I've ever had in life, we had a fight first. And if we're able to resolve it, that's my friend. Because friends will have conflict. Friends will have conflict. Let me keep on going. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. I got so much material, I just don't want to stop and interrupt, and hopefully I won't go on a tangent myself. Mm -hmm. But I want you to get this, and I want you to see what God says so closely about friendship. So, we saw the God connection with David and um, Jonathan. Let's look at the, I mean, the soul connection with David and Jonathan. Let's look at the God connection. Luke 6, chapter 12, I mean, verse 12 and 13. 12 and 13. And it says, and it came to pass in those days that he went out into the mountain to pray. And continued all night in prayer to who? God. God. And when it was day, he called unto him, unto him his disciples. And all of them he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles. Now, Jesus just walked around and picked those twelve. That's God. He just automatically knew, you're supposed to be with me. And you're supposed to be with me. Oh, you're supposed to be with me. God connection. Well, he is God. Amen. But he even said, even out of you twelve, I chose the devil. <laughs> I've chosen you 12 even one of you were done. So he knew he was even picking the wrong type of friend. Hello. Amen. Amen. Go back to Proverbs 27. So I showed you God connection and soul connection. But this is what we need to be doing around here. This is the greatest opportunity as men and women in friendship that you could be doing. And I see it happening a lot now. I see y'all in y'all word more now than when I first came down here. It's, it's powerful. When I first came here, I never seen this many people in the word with y'all. You know, it is excellent. Pastor Rosado is doing an excellent work. Don't y'all agree? Amen. 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 Proverbs 27. <coughs> and look at verse 17. Iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Amen. Do I have to explain that? Do y'all know what two pieces of iron do when they're rubbing together? Shot. Amen. That means 
means you can accept what your friend is saying because they are sharpening you intellectually, spiritually. Amen. With compassion, with empathy. Amen. That's why it's so good, brothers, when you stand around here and talk the word of God. Y'all are sharpening one another. It ain't about who's right or wrong. No, let me sharpen you. No, let me sharpen you. Let me get a little bit more on top of that. Let me get a little bit more on top of that. Amen. Amen. But here's the problem. Go to Proverbs 24 and 22. Here's the problem. Y'all ready now? Let me get you a little bit here. Here's the problem. I opened up good. Proverbs 22 and verse 24. What does it say? It said, make no friendship with the angry man. And with the furious man, thou shalt not go. Make no friendship with the angry man. We got a lot of angry brothers around there. <laughs> and with the furious man, boy, don't even go with him. Don't even walk with him. You know you headed for trouble. <laughs> so here's the main reason. The reason why I read that scripture is because we pick foolish friends. Amen. In our choices of friendship, we pick them foolishly. Amen. I know I had. I didn't understand friendship. Friendship was about what can I get from you? What can you do for me? You haven't done nothing for me lately. <laughs> Amen. Remember, there is nothing like a good friend in your life. Amen. Some people are friends for fun and not for fathers. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Some people are friends for fun, but not for fatherance. Amen. They may not be there to help you further your walk with God or your spiritual maturity. Go to Pro I mean, Psalms 1. Some friends ain't there. They're only there for selfish reasons. Amen. Psalms 1. I think Psalms 1 is one of the perfect examples of this. <laughs> Psalms 1, verse 1. Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the who? Scornful. Oh. Amen. Now, what is he talking about? He's talking about someone who wants to mock spiritual things. When you got somebody who's always mocking spiritual things, you don't need to be sitting with them. If you're not careful, watch this, all this is in here. If you're not careful, you'll go from walking, look what it says. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the other God. You'll go from walking with God, amen. Then you'll go to standing, because he says next. Walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stand in the way of who? Sinners. The next thing you want to do, you will wind up what? Sin. Next thing you know, you don't got comfortable. You don't got comfortable in your condition. You don't got comfortable in your sin. But God said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stand in the way of sinners. Nor sit up in the seat of the scorn. Amen. Amen. So you will go from walking to standing to sitting. This is a digression of the believer who wants to keep having fun with foolish friends instead of furthering the spiritual walk. The first level is walking. From walking, you're stopping. Amen, because you're standing. You don't start walking with the Lord, now you just stop. Amen. You don't went from walking to stopping. Now you're standing in the way of sinners. And before long, if you don't correct these type of people in your life, you will find yourself sitting in the seat of the scornful. Amen. I'm glad I wrote all it down. But they know it well, I was going to remember it all. When God was ministering to me last week, because I was saying to myself, you know, we did a great message last week, right? Very powerful. And I said, you know, I noticed that there were no real friendships here. This place is called friendship. How come we don't have a spirit of friendship? You know, there's divisions over here, there's cliques over there, there's disputes over there, there's, there's horniness over here, there's laughter over there, there's lust over there. There's everything in here. This is a place that we deal with spiritual warfare on a continual basis. So why are you so upset? Because when you come in, you want to deal with some kind of spirit. Everybody in here is saved. Everybody in here is walking with God. And everybody in here got some form of a demon. Amen, man. Your job is to make sure that demon don't jump on you. Get connected to the right track. Because they come from states. They come from the city. They come from the town. They come from other counties. They come from all over the place. And hopefully when they come through here, we can do 
you some demon mustard. Amen. Amen. Go to Psalms 119. 